Hi everyone, um, really nice to be here and thank you firstly to uh, Cocho for inviting me um, to uh, talk today. Uh, my name's Andy Frost, I'm the Head of IT at RPC and I want to talk to you about a success story from our side fundamentally um, about the mobile life cycle and the various stages that we've gone through as a law firm to um, improve and enhance our mobile services um, across our estate. I know there's a lot of legal people here, um, but um, for those of you who aren't from the legal industry, um, RPC are an international top 40 law firm. Um, we've now got around 1,200 employees um, across four different sites, London, Bristol, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Uh, we're recognized as a legal leader in industries such as insurance, retail, uh, technology, and media. Um, we've been working with Cocho in various different capacities for about nine years. And when I say Cocho, the previous incumbent as well. Um, but it was really the last kind of three to four years where we've really looked to kind of push their services even more through the virtual mobile manager. And, and to be honest, it's been a real game changer for us. And it's something that, you know, I'm really pleased to talk to you all about today. So let me go back. I'll go back to three, four years ago, 2020. We were all in lockdown. Um, all of my Fiona's partners had this wonderful device here, which they like to keep in their drawers or hide away from their, uh, from their clients. But um, the reality is we had 450 connections with O2 directly. We worked directly with O2 at that time. We had a really disjointed MDM environment. So we had an element of Mobile Iron that looked after certain elements. We had Intune that looked after certain things. Um, and parts of our Asia officers didn't even have any real uh, MDM solutions. So it was really disjointed. We couldn't deliver patches out to people. We couldn't deliver updates out to people. There was no consistent approach at all. Um, our international roaming was also really, really rigid and disjointed. So we used um, Asavi Moda through O2. Um, through three or four different various group policies that we'd allocate mobiles into. The problem with that is, is that our fee owners just would go off on holiday and not tell us, uh, which didn't really help the IT department, which ultimately led to bill shock. Um, I had one particular situation where uh, a fee owner decided to go on holiday to Serbia without telling us. Obviously, Serbia's not in the, uh, in the EU banding at that time. Uh, decided to start streaming Netflix for the entire duration of his holiday off his corporate mobile. Um, that wasn't a particularly nice conversation I had with O2. Uh, fortunately, I was able to negotiate that down, but those are the kind of real life situations that we were living in at RPC at that moment in time. So we were also getting high monthly airtime spend as a result of that for those 450 connections. Um, we didn't really have any trending. Trending was something that you know is really important to us now. We need to know what our users are doing, where they're going, how much their data consumption is, what apps they're using, so that we can then tailor a proactive approach to make sure that they're able to actually, you know, we can control their spend and again not have that bill shock element. So um, we were looking for some assistance fundamentally, and with that, um, I went out to RFP, went out to tender, um, spoke with a number of. Um, customers, different suppliers, and um, went with Cocho. Uh, we had a really good relationship with them. Um, they kind of understood us as a law firm, fundamentally. They really kind of were working with us at that time, but their expertise really took me by surprise, and all the various offerings that they were able to give us um, meant that they were really the right choice and the right fit for RPC as well. Um, we renegotiated the O2 contract, so we had a three-staged element towards that. Um, and, you know, moving over to that secondary O2 contract, once it was renewed, we looked to consolidate all of our inventory. We needed to make sure that all of the, uh, the phones that were kind of not being used were cut off, and we really started to kind of minimize and make more efficient that contract to make it work for us. The other element is we upgraded to a single global MDM environment, which was one of the key drivers and I have to say the team, um, Andy, Nando, all those guys worked tirelessly to kind of bring that together, to put that single Intune global solution so that we could then start managing our Asia mobiles effectively as well. So that was a real, real bonus for us. Um, we decided to move away from Asavi. It wasn't working for us. It was too rigid, as I've mentioned previously. 
Um, we decided to go with the one dealer option um, on recommendation from Cocho, and we found it was a really, really successful application. Um, was able to control the spend, monitor the data usage, monitor where people were going, be able to put parameters in to stop people from downloading too much when they didn't need to. It really was a really terrific tool set, and you know, we still continue to use that element today. Um, the other, uh, other things which uh, I think are really proactive is Rachel and the service desk by using the, the Cocho InView portal is something that's been a real success for us. Uh, my service desk use it on a daily basis. We have monthly service reviews where we go through the portal. And if anybody else has not actually seen the portal, I'd recommend speaking to your account manager and have a look at it because it really is a fantastic um, piece of tool set that, that you can use to manage your mobile estate. The other thing that once we'd completed all that in lockdown, refresh mobile phones, sent them all out to people, got it all upgraded, put it into Intune, <coughs> happy days. Um, but it didn't stop there. Um, you know, I asked uh, Matt Atkinson, who sadly can't be here today, uh, once the project had near enough completed, um, do you mind helping me with my Asia contracts now as well? And Matt quite hap you know, happily said yes. Um, he didn't have too much experience in that, in that industry at that time. Um, but as a result of the assistance that Kosho provided to me, um, that brought down our mobile uh, contracts even further, so we had even more savings as a result of that. So um, it's, it was really fantastic. So where are we today? So our mobile estate has grown. We've gone from 450 mobiles to around about 900 now. Um, so but our airtime has actually reduced across the months. So our monthly spend on our bills has gone down quite considerably, um, which is you know, a massive change. And that's all down to the controls and the VMM service that we've put in place with Kocho. The other element that I want to talk about is the, is the DAISY contract. So this is kind of the stage three mechanism. And I know, Rachel, um, I'll invite you onto stage in a moment. Um, but what I'd really... Uh, what was really key with this was giving us the flexibility to be able to flex the contract from month to month as opposed to previously just being hit with an O2 bill that just used to slap, slap on my desk every month without being, a, you know, being very reactive as being proactive. So I don't know, Rachel, if you'd like to just come on stage and explain uh, how that works for us. Uh, nice to meet you all. Um, so I'm Rachel. Um, I lead on service delivery for the Virtual Mobile Manager, which is a service that we deliver for there's a few customers that I can see um, around the room. Um, just to give you an idea of how the new contract works um, from a day-to-day -day perspective and how we um, monitor and control, as, as Andy said. So now that we're on um, a new DAISY O2 contract, we're constantly reviewing um, the unbuilt data usage. So this is all about being proactive, what are we doing in month, as opposed to massive bill at the end of the month, next month we recommend X, Y, and Z. So it's very much our analysts are looking at this daily, um, producing uh, weekly reporting. Um, we've got full visibility and control of the device estate. I mean, as Andy said, you can't control when people are going on holiday. Um, in fact, Matt Atkinson, who was going to be speaking, is actually in the Maldives today, so um, he won't be using his mobile. It's £4 per meg. Lucky for some. Um, so, yeah, he won't be using his. Um, but yeah, you can't control that, but you can educate and you can share knowledge. Um, you know, all the presentations today have been around. There's a lot of pressure on um, security. There's lots of things that IT teams have to think about. So our team know their data day in, day out, and we can kind of take that off you know, off Andy's plate so he doesn't have to worry about it. Um, I'll give you an example of a recent um, sort of proactivity that we've done. So there was a user in Algeria, I think it was, mm, about two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Um, we picked it up from our unbuilt data usage, made RPC aware. They can let the user know so that they can stop that usage, connect to Wi-Fi um, and do that sort of thing. Um, but not only that, so on the DAISY contract, we can actually backdate bundles. So we were actually able to alter an O2 bundle, backdate it to the start of the month, and then absorb a lot of that cost. So in that situation, we actually reduce the cost by 63%. So it's a, an example of the sort of savings that you can make. And as Andy said, 
mobile estates growing, airtime costs are coming down. Um, and that's an example. If you can pick out those individuals, actually monitor those bundles and backdate and absorb that cost, then you know, it, it goes hand in hand that you're going to make those savings. Um, again, protection against bill shock, that alludes to you know, what I've just discussed. It's about um, knowing where to go, educating us, working closely with RPC and, and letting them know um, what they can do internally and how they can uh, promote things to their users. Um, you briefly mentioned the InView portal, so yeah. we can store four years of tr uh, trend data. So I have a pretty good view of which users travel a lot, which users use a lot of international calls. So our team are, as I said, constantly monitoring, and we've got a full trend. So that allows Andy to be able to project future costs from a budgetary point of view um, and actually be able to think, again, it's all about being proactive um, as opposed to reactive. And then I'll briefly mention Jamf, but then I'll, I'll kind of pass back. But it's, it's kind of hand in hand, really. So we have the... The, um, the work that we're doing on VMM, but there's also the JAMP side of things. So you can have policy set up so that users that go to certain zones are restricted to a certain amount of data. So again, those two products are working together so that the two teams are intertwined between security and VMM. So it's kind of like an overall umbrella service, I would say. Um, but hopefully that told you a bit more about how it runs yeah. day to day. And no, thank you, Rachel. Okay. Thank you. I think... Um, the, the other thing, just to just to touch upon that as well, is that um, I see Cocho as an extension of my service desk. Fundamentally, what they do for me on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not a case of just looking at an alert and just waiting for it to pop up. They're actively calling my service desk to say, "Have you noticed this individual?" The Algeria one is a is a really good example because we've not really had too many recently, and the gentleman again. Another partner went away, decided to use GMAPs on his mobile, his corporate mobile, whilst he's tr tr trekking around Algeria. So again, you can see that data just clocking up. So it's those types of things that really, really make the service, you know, really work for us in, you know, in particular. The other element that I will just touch upon is the, is the Jamf mobile as well. Uh, we, you know, we've heard a lot from uh, security individuals um, today, uh, but it's also important that uh, that Cocho also provide that that mobile threat defence for us as well on our mobiles, and that's something that's worked really well for us as well. So I just wanted to highlight that too. So why go with them? Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. To, but um, no, why go with them? I mean, they they're a trusted partner. Um, of ours, RPC. Um, we rely on them. Their expertise in the, in the mobile marketplace for us has been significant, fundamentally. Matt and Rachel and the team have been outstanding working with us. Um, we're now having conversations. Last week, I was chatting with Rachel about um, what we're doing with our third evolution of refreshes now, what we're going to do. So you know, we're really keen to continue that strong relationship. Um, I mentioned about the, uh, the deadlines and the, the element around COVID. We had till Christmas to try and deliver that before the, uh, before the O2 contract then had to be renewed. So we had basically a window of about 12 weeks. Um, and they delivered. And they delivered you know, two weeks earlier uh, than anticipated. So you know, the team, when they work together, we collaborate, we really kind of hit those targets. Um, as I mentioned, the exceptional customer service um, goes without saying. They're a great team to work with. Fantastic collaboration right the way through the accounts management team, all the way through to the technical advisory elements of the team. So, yeah, but the bottom line is it saved us thousands, thousands of pounds. Now, I was thinking about this the other day, and I said to myself, I go, shall I just tell people how much I've actually saved over the four years? And I thought, it's a bit boring, really, isn't it? It's a bit boring. Um, so I thought, why don't I try and shoehorn in one of my passions in particular, because that's always quite good to do in a presentation. And I know it's near lunch, so I know it's a little bit of fun as well. So um, I'm a massive Nottingham Forest fan. Football is my passion, um, particularly my team. Um, and I thought, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Um, if you know football, can you tell me who that footballer is, please? <laughs> Thank you very much, that man. Shame by that man of beer. Um, yes, Cameron Hudson-Odoi. 
Ex-Chelsea, now Nottingham Forest, signed this season injured, which is a pity because we could do with him against Villa. <laughs> um, but just to highlight and just to bring this back again, over the last four years that I've been using the VMM service, we've saved 27% of that man's transfer fee. <laughs> so I'll let you guys work that out over lunch. <laughs>